you are hurting yourself by cutting your hair. I just want you to see this very briefly and very quickly that this is true, it's a fact. You know, anything that you cut off of your body, naturally, it hurts to some extent. It may be subtle, the pain may be not even perceived by you because you can't perceive it yet or right now, but it's there. So you are cutting off your hair, you're cutting off your beard, you're cutting off your head hair, you're cutting off your body hair, and your body reacts to it unfavorably. Always, 100% of the time. I want you to ask yourself why you're doing this, why you're cutting your hair off. If you truly give me a true answer, okay, I'll leave you alone, I'll stop uh, bothering you with these videos. But if you don't have a satisfactory answer, I know why you're cutting your hair. It's because of society's influence. There's no other reason. It's not like nature came to you and said, hey, it's more favorable for you to not have hair on your body or on your scalp or on your uh, chin if you're a man. Nature didn't say that. In fact, it's the complete opposite. You're much more rewarded by having hair on your body than you not having hair. I want you to see a simple uh, idea here that when something scary happens in your environment, maybe you get surprised or something unnatural happens. Like for example, maybe you're imagining some ghost is walking around, maybe it's a true ghost. What happens? You're naturally, your hair stand up on your arms and on the back of your neck. It all stands up. Why? Why do you think that is? Because your hair is a receptive for electromagnetic energy, for electricity. It's receptive towards electricity. So your body naturally brings up its hair because they're like tiny little receptors. They're tiny little nerve endings. So whatever is happening in the environment, you could sense it that much easier. If you were to cut off your hair on your arms, for example, you would not have the same advantage. If something were to happen in the environment, your ability to subtly perceive it, your, bo your body's ability to instantaneously understand what's happening would significantly go down. When I say significantly, I truly do mean significantly. Now, having hair on your arms is one thing. It's not, uh, it's like not so, uh, such a big deal. Whereas having hair on your head is a very big deal. And if you're constantly shaving your head for whatever reasons or cutting your hair, uh, you're lowering your senses. You're diminishing your receptivity. So it's like, you know, you have your visual apparatus, but let's say you diminish it by 10%. That's how much you're losing out. 10% is, uh, doesn't sound like a lot. Maybe it's not a lot, but try to lower your vision by 10% and go about your day for, for one day. Well, I don't advise you to do that because it's not uh, helpful to your survival, but that's the analogy. That's how it is. So warriors in the past, especially in, in China and Eastern countries, they would always understand and know this fact that warriors never cut their hair. Why? Because it's a survival advantage when you're fighting. If you have any kind of yogic practices or meditation practices, you can clearly see this for yourself, that your hair is able to be, uh, receive the environment that much better. So I don't have that long hair on my head and that's, I'm feeling the disadvantage. It's still, maybe I'm two months away from properly growing my, growing my hair to the point where it's like, okay, now it's, I'm feeling st stable and it's long enough for it to count. Right now it's not like that. So I'm feeling the pain in the nerve endings as they're trying to grow. It's like, oh man, I cut my hair. I did cut my hair when I came to uh, Sydney. I needed to, not out of delusion. <clears throat> So really consider yourself why you're cutting your hair. If you're a man and you're not like you're not an extreme case where you're balding and you're cutting your hair naturally, you're going to the barber. First of all, you're going to the barber and he's some stranger is taking scissors and puts it up to your head. Whatever energy that person has, that barber has, whatever intentions he has towards you, he's doing something so intimate with your body. It's uh, not something that I would suggest you do, not something that I would recommend. So don't go to barber shops. Better that you cut your own hair, or maybe your family cut your hair if you are going to cut your hair. But then again, why are you cutting your hair? Like, why are you doing that? Because you want to look proper and prim and they call it fresh or clean in the environment. What is that? What is that? Okay. No animal in nature is cutting his hair. That's how you know it's uh, the right thing to do, to not cut your hair. Yes, you may say that animals shed their hair. Yes, that's true. But you don't have that ability. You don't shed your hair. It's also not an accident why yogis have long hair. Yogis have very long hair. And there's a reason for that. 
it's not because they're following some religion or some book knowledge or something like this. Yes, I'm going to write this in a book, like don't cut your hair. This is step one, or one of the first few steps. And uh, you should follow it simply because of my authority. But, you know, it's one thing to listen to someone's authority and uh, blindly do what they're telling you. And it's another thing to totally to experience it for yourself. So this came to me as a result of me watching Sadhguru studying Sadhguru. And I noticed he had a beard. I know I, I knew he had a beard for a long time. But then suddenly I kind of started really questioning that. Like, why does he have a beard? He's not like all the, all the other men. And his wisdom can't be understated. So obviously a man with such a high caliber of knowledge and wisdom and insight. Whatever he's doing in life, I'm willing to follow that and really investigate. Like, why? Why is he doing that? And I asked myself, why? Why am I shaving? And it became so, suddenly it became so ridiculous for me to take a razor and start chopping off my hair. It's so weird. You know, and now I feel naturally more stable and stronger as a man. And I don't care as much to the physical environment or what people think of me or anything like this. This is a kind of like a natural protection. It's a concealment also. It conceals your neck. This is the advantage also in fighting. Of course, it's, it, not, it's not, it doesn't give you any protection, like a sword's not gonna stop, your, a beard's not gonna stop your sword. But it offers concealment, okay, and that's important. If you forget about the beard, if you had a concealment of just a bandana over your uh, face and covering your neck, that also adds an intimidation factor. And it's huge and it's seen. And that's why certain types of uh, people choose to wear bandanas on their, on their faces, you know, gangs. Well, also for the concealment of their identity as well. But try just covering your neck alone with a bandana and then walk in the public. You will see people will look at you differently. It's, uh, yes, this is how it is. So again, warriors do this and, you know, I don't believe in going out in public if you're not ready to battle it out to, for your life. Why? Because the pot potential of that happening is, is there. It's a percentage. And, you know, I see human beings, especially men, young men, walking around with tight jeans, some skateboarding shoes, uh, tight, a tight shirt, and some hat uh, and some sunglasses to protect your, to, you know, to not see the environment properly, and then headphones. Your survival ability has gone down by 60%. So if God forbid some accident truly came to you, some bad human being wanted to assault you or rob you or take things from you or do whatever they wanted to you, it's not it's not so far out of the imagination like these things are happening if that if you are the victim to that and probably you will be a victim to that because a person that's in this position of life that wants to rob you he's looking for the weakest person and you've diminished your survival capabilities by 60 percent that's you're an obvious target i'm not an obvious target by the way from the shoes that i wear from the pants that i've chosen how flexible my pants are i can squat i can jump i can do the splits and there won't be any problems i can climb a tree my pants won't be an issue Similarly with my shirt, this is why I don't wear a tight shirt. Why? Because I don't want to be restricted to my movement at all. I want to be flexible. If I could wear nothing at all, I would wear nothing at all. But I can't. It's not really appropriate thing to do. Also, kind of cold. So I have this shirt and I'm aware of my survival. Okay? So I'm not walking around with headphones in my ears and never in public. That's just a tragedy. And various other things. Okay? So uh, how does this relate to you cutting your hair and why it's uh, painful for you to cut your hair? I want you to investigate this very deeply. The next time that you're going to shave, if you're already shaving and you're really big into shaving, just trust me, next time you shave, feel the sensations of your hair. Your hair does have a sensation. It's not just dead particles or whatever scientists says. It's not that. It actually has nerve endings, it has pain receptors, and they're very subtle, extremely subtle. Your body will basically go like, hey buddy, what are you doing? Why are you doing such an unnatural thing? You shouldn't be doing this to me when you're cutting your hair. So you're going to, I feel this for myself, that my long beard is helping me to survive. It's increasing my survival value. And as a man, that's your number one priority. Your number one value as a man in this life is how well you can survive. That's what women are attracted to. That's what all everyone is attracted to if you're a man, for your survival capabilities. So you having a clean shaven face and looking like a teenage boy is not helping you to your survival not helping you to survive at all so uh, please stop it okay really investigate this look in the mirror next time you're doing this why are you shaving your hair why are you shaving your beard and don't worry about it buddy okay just let yourself go you're supposed to look like that if you just let yourself go totally for one year or two years and how you to look without cutting your hair cutting your beard that's how a man is supposed to look
Like if we, if an alien came down to Earth and he wanted to find the ideal species or ideal uh, site of a man, well, he wouldn't look at any because I have short hair, but he would go to like the Himalayas and look at one of these yogis. That's a wild man, you know? Like you, it's one thing to go see a domesticated dog or a domesticated pet, even if it's a lion or a tiger, they're one way. But it's a totally other thing to go into the wild, into the jungle and see a wild creature, see a wild dog or see a wild lion or tiger. Same thing, okay? You're like domesticated in your society, in your concrete jungle that you're living in. You have been domesticated. And it's fine to be domesticated, you know? Dogs are feeling very happy to be fed every day and everything is nice and proper. Yet if you introduce them to wild dogs, there will be a huge contrast. Huge. Also, the amount of trauma that the dog has undergone and absorbed and seen, he won't be able to cope with the wild dogs. So I'm like a wild dog here. I'm like a wild human being. I just crawl, came out of the jungle and I'm sitting here and talking to you. And you're like a domesticated creature. So if you want to be a domesticated creature, then okay, you can do so. But I'm willing to bet that you're not. You don't want to, especially if you watch up until now. So trust me, this is how a man is supposed to look like. A man is supposed to look like he's what? Wild. That's uh, how all the yogis in the Himalayas look. They look like they're wild. I'll leave you with this. Okay, Sadhguru was asked like, Sadhguru was asked, hey, in one word, how would you define yourself? And Sadhguru said, can I use two words? And the person was like, yeah. And he said, wildlife. He's a wildlife. Meaning what? Not domesticated. Truly, from the jungle, wild, just as a man should be. That's it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'm offering you this gift for you to get in touch with me and do a spiritual consultation. For absolutely free, for no charge, there's no barrier to entry. All you have to do is reach out to me on Facebook, the link will be down below. Send me a message and we will FaceTime, I'll call you with a FaceTime. You can ask me any questions that you want, share with me your life story, I'll give you some direct perspectives into your life. Why? Because I have clear vision and I'll be able to help you definitely. And uh, a lot of people have been already contacting me and I'm doing this in exchange for donations. So if you don't have money to share with me, that's okay, I'm still willing to talk to you. Yet, uh, if you found the conversation valuable, this is how I'm going to feed my life, this is how I'm going to fund my life. Simply send me a donation. The link will also be down below in the... Uh, my PayPal link will be down below. That's it. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Shambo.